Uh, so we talked about that product, which was useful in a couple different ways. Uh, it, it can be used to measure angle between vectors, uh, and then you can use it to uh, do projections. Um, another uh, product that you could describe between vectors. So yeah, there's more than one product that makes sense in the vector world. Uh, and this next type of product is called cross product. So let me describe what it is and how it's used. Okay, so it's called cross product because of the notation. So uh, when you multiply uh, two vectors using cross product, you use the cross times symbol. Um, one thing to note is that a cross product only makes sense in three dimensions. So dot product, you could make it sense in any number of uh, dimensions. Um, in fact, in the worksheet, we've done it like a six dimensional geometry, uh, but with cross product, it has to be exactly three dimensions. Um, so uh, let's say we have two vectors A and B um, that's in three dimensions. How do we multiply? Well, that's the formula. Okay, so if you kind of stare at this long enough, maybe you see there's a pattern there. Um, like uh, each component, so in the first component, uh, the subscript one is missing. Uh, all of the components looks like it's product of two things subtracted from each other. Um, there's a couple other things that you might notice, but don't try to memorize this formula. It's not a very productive way to memorize or understand what the cross product is doing. So I'll talk about uh, how to do this computation a little bit later, but let me define it uh, geometrically what it's doing. So, um, to describe uh, a vector, so, uh, okay, so this is one thing that's different from the dot product, right? So when you take two vectors and compute a dot product, you get a scalar. Um, but when you take the cross product of two different vectors, you'll get another vector. Um, so uh, that's one thing that's different. Um, and if you're talking about a vector, uh, I have to describe which way is it pointing and also what the magnitude of the vector is. Um, so let me describe the direction first. Uh, the direction of the cross product is going to be uh, given by the right hand rule. Um, so uh, what does that mean? Um, okay. Uh, so what, you, what I want you to do uh, is imagine your uh, fingers on your right hand uh, going in the direction of uh, vector A. And you curl your fingers towards vector B. So A uh, towards B uh, and your thumb is pointing in the direction of A cross B. So in this picture, um, if you had your fingers curling this way, your thumb will be pointing uh, straight out of this uh, screen. Um, I hope you could uh, imagine that. Um, sorry, the picture doesn't really give you a good indication of which way it's pointing. Um, so A cross B is gonna point out of the screen towards your face. Um, if we had done uh, B cross A, so start with fingers pointing in B direction and curl it towards A. Uh, that B cross A will point into the screen, uh, away from your face. Um, okay, so that's the direction. Um, and I should also talk about the magnitude um, of the cross product. So the magnitude is going to be the area of the parallelogram that's formed by two copies of each of the factors. So if I'm doing A cross B, uh, take two copies of that and take two copies of vector B as well. And uh, if you take two of each, you can always form a parallelogram. And we look at the area 
for the parallelogram that's formed by those four vectors. And that's the magnitude. So it kind of has the meaning of the area, right? Like uh, in, uh, in scalars, uh, when you multiply things, you get area of a rectangle with the length and width that's determined. Uh, with vectors, uh, it keeps in um, the, the angle is kept, kept into account with the cross product and the area of the parallelogram is computed by the magnitude of the cross product. So that's kind of handy. Actually, they're both kind of handy. Um, the, the fact that the direction is determined by the cross, um, cross product is also handy as well, uh, because this could be a way to generate a vector that's perpendicular to any two vectors. Um, so if you determine, if you give it two vectors, then you can always find a vector that's kind of 90 degrees from both of those vectors by using cross product. So that's a useful feature as well. The direction is useful and uh, the magnitude is also useful because they both have a geometric meaning to them. Okay. So uh, one thing that uh, you should keep in mind is that the cross product is not commutative. So what that means is that A cross B is different from B cross A. Um, in fact, because of the, the right-hand rule that I described, um, the area of the parallelogram is still the same. Um, but the direction is exactly opposite of each other. So actually A cross B is the negative of B cross A. So order matters, so keep that in mind. Okay, let's get to actually computing these things. Um, so to do that, there's a visual mnemonic uh, that we could be using. So if you happen to have taken a matrix algebra course, that's TMath uh, 308, then you know how to compute what a determinant is. Um, and you can compute the cross product in exactly the same way. Um, it's okay if you haven't seen uh, determinant. Um, when you get to it, uh, if you ever take a matrix algebra course, uh, then you could use this mnemonic to uh, compute the determinant. So how do we go about it? So what we do is we're gonna make a three by three grid um, of, the, of the two vectors. So uh, on the top row, uh, you're gonna put the three basis i, j, k. Remember i is one, zero, zero. j is zero, one, zero. k is zero, zero, one. That goes on the top row. And you put the, the first factor, um, oops, I believe, okay. The first factor of the, the cross product uh, in the middle row. So A1, A2, A3 are the three components of the first vector. And B1, B2, B3, the, the components of the, the second uh, vector is gonna go on the bottom. Okay, and then how do we compute the vector itself? Well, um, what you do is this. Um, to compute the ith component, uh, you eliminate the first row and the first column. Okay, so if you cross those out, uh, there's uh, two by two um, entry that's remaining and you go you like draw the cross, right? So A2 times B3 and then subtract B2 times A3. Okay, that's how you comp compute the first component. Let me erase that. And to compute the second component, uh, you do something similar. So the first row is knocked out and the middle column is knocked out. And then there's uh, four entry that's left. And again, you're gonna make the cross motion, right? So A3 times B3, sorry, A1 times B3 minus B1 times A3. 
That's the second component. And then you do something similar for the third component as well. The first row is deleted, third column is deleted, and you're gonna make the cross motion. So A1 times B2 minus B1 times A2. And um, this is almost it. Uh, for technical reasons, you flip the sign on the middle one, um, uh, and then we're done. <laughs> okay, I hope that that made sense. Um, okay, you're probably wondering why the middle component needs to flip the sign. Um, so if you've uh, if you've seen determinant, then you know that um, you're supposed to flip a sign each time. Um, it is related to that, uh, but um, it's hard to describe why. <laughs> okay, uh, so before we go any further and start solving geometry problems, um, let's let's take it out. Uh, on a spin and try to see if you can compute this. So I've written down two vectors right here. Uh, I want you to pause this video uh, and see if you can compute the cross product. And um, well, that'll do it too. IJK one minus one minus one, one half, one, one half. Okay, so uh, do a cross motion here. Uh, negative one half plus one. The second component is flipped. So I put a negative sign there. And then I do one times one half uh, minus one half times minus one. So that would be plus one half. And that's gonna be the middle component, uh, and then finally, kth component is going to be uh, one minus one half. Okay, so here's the vector I ended up with. So note that this is the same thing as one half, negative one, one half. Um, one thing that I want you to notice uh, is how much more cumbersome this computation was. So dot product is relatively quick to compute. Um, cross product takes time um, and you should get used to that. In fact, uh, when you're doing uh, computation or you're, you're solving a problem that involves a cross product, uh, because it takes so uh, long to compute it and also there's flipping of negative signs and it's easy to make a mistake. Um, uh, the way to get through this uh, is to be disciplined and check your answers. So there's a built-in check that you could do uh, to immediately see uh, if you did this correctly or not. Um, so the way to do that is that we know that the cross product gives you a vector that's 90 degrees from the, the two vector that's part of the cross product. So one way to know that vector is uh, orthogonal or 90 degrees from the, uh, the vector is to take the dot product. We know that the dot product uh, is given by uh, the product of the magnitudes times cosine of the angle between them. Um, and if the angle between is pi over two, cosine of pi over two is zero. So uh, you'll get a zero. So the way to do it, uh, way to check would be take this vector that you just computed and kind of mentally do the dot product with each of the factors. So uh, if we take the dot product with the first one, what do we get? So we have one half plus one, uh, minus one half. Uh, 
which is one, which is not zero. So we made a mistake. We just caught ourselves making a mistake. Okay, where did we go wrong? Oh, that should have been plus. Okay, all right. See, you, you can catch mistakes that way. Okay, so now uh, three halves minus three halves is equal to zero. So there we go. Uh, we caught a mistake. <laughs> Let's double check uh, with the second factor as well. So if you take this vector uh, and take the dot product with the second factor, uh, what do we get? Let's see, one quarter minus one plus three quarters. And that adds up to zero. So now uh, this vector is perpendicular to both of the factors. So uh, I, I think this is the, the right answer. I hope you got it correct the first time. Um, but uh, yeah, you can catch your mistakes this way. That wasn't a planned thing. Anyways, uh, okay. So uh, this is a useful technique, so um, maybe a couple problems um, along with this. So let's find a unit vector that's orthogonal to these two vectors. So if, I, if you want to find an orthogonal vector, um, then uh, one way to do it is with cross product. So let's do that. Okay, let's see, one minus zero, one minus two, and zero minus two. So I plus J minus two K. And let's just uh, make sure that this is indeed um, orthogonal from the first two vectors. So if I take the dot product with between this ijk uh, plus j plus k plus uh, with this vector, we'll get one plus one minus two, which is zero. And if you take the dot product with this guy, we'll get two plus zero minus two, which is again zero, okay? So I got a vector that's orthogonal, um, but the problem asks for you to compute the unit vector. Um, so uh, to make it into a unit vector, we could divide by the magnitude. So uh, if we compute the magnitude, you get square root of six. Um, so we can get uh, this vector and divide by square root of six. Okay, there we go. All right. Um, all right, let's do another problem. Uh, find the area of the triangle PQR. So there's three points in space. Let's call this P, Q, and R. And uh, if you have three points in space that forms a triangle, uh, we want the area of this triangle. So what we do know how to compute is the area of a parallelogram. Um, so what we could do is this, we could, uh, well, first, we have to make these into a vector. So we could have a vector PQ and PR. And if you take the cross product, then we'll get the area or parallelogram. 
which is not what we want, but it's exactly twice the area of the triangle. Um, so we can just compute the cross product, get the area, uh, then divide by two. Okay, so that's the, that's the idea. So let's compute these. So to get the vector PQ, I take the, the components, so the, uh, the coordinates of uh, the point Q and subtract coordinates of point P from it. So four minus zero, uh, one minus negative two and negative two minus zero. And back to PR, uh, it's gonna be five minus zero, three minus negative two, and one minus zero. Okay. So PQ crossed with PR. Four, three, negative two, and five, five, one. I didn't give enough, give myself enough room, okay. So the ith component is gonna be uh, three minus negative 10. The j's component will be four minus negative 10. And k component will be 20 minus 15. Okay. Negative 14 and five. And uh, these are kind of big numbers, but let's, let's make sure we can take the dot product and we get zero. So I, I'm gonna pull out my calculator, 13 times four plus negative 14 times three uh, plus five times negative two. is zero. And let me take the dot product of the second vector as well. So 13 times five minus 14 times five plus five times one is also zero. Okay. All right, so now we can take the magnitude and then divide by two. So the magnitude is 13 squared plus negative 14 squared plus five squared inside of the square root all over two. Okay, and uh, it didn't turn out to be a nice number, but some root 390 all over two. And that would be the area of the triangle that's formed by uh, PQR. Okay, I hope that those computations made sense. Um, I think this is, oh no, I wanna do one more thing. Um, just kind of uh, list of properties of the cross product. Um, so some of this I've already said, um, let's see, uh, A cross B is uh, the negative of B cross A. Um, it, it works nicely with scalar multiplication. So uh, multiplying one of the vectors with a constant, you can pull that outside of a cross product or put it in the other factor um, and you still get the same answer. So uh, it's, it's, it's what's called bilinear, right? It's linear in both, um, both factor of the cross product. Uh, you could also do kind of like a distribution law as, as with regular um, multiplication and addition. So 
uh, cross product obeys that, which is kind of nice. Um, so when you do A cross uh, in parentheses B plus C, you get A cross B plus A cross C. One thing to keep in mind is that um, when you do the distribution, you can't change the order of multiplication because it's not commutative. Um, so if you're multiplying from the left, uh, A cross should appear on the left. Uh, you could distribute from the right as well, um, but make sure the second factor appears on the right if you do that, okay? And another formula that's kind of similar to um, the dot product is that if you just wanted the magnitude of the cross product, uh, there's a, fam a formula that's very much like uh, the dot product. You multiply the two magnitudes and multiply the sine of the angle uh, instead of the cosine. Now, um, you could come up with a formula uh, for angle using this fact, um, but really uh, this formula isn't as cool as the dot product one because uh, cross product takes way, way more work than dot product. So uh, if you want the angle between vectors, uh, might as well use the dot product one. Okay, but um, uh, one question you can kind of try to answer for yourself is that, does this uh, gel with the fact that um, this is computing the area uh, of a parallelogram? So maybe I'll give you a hint picture and convince yourself why this would compute the area of the parallelogram. Okay. All right, this is where I want to end the video. Um, I'll see you later.